About three years before construction began, the president of Sacred Heart University at the time gathered about 20 of us together to study and pray and discern what a chapel on a uh, Catholic college campus should and could and would look like. Um, since Sacred Heart University is not founded by a religious order, but in fact is um, a community that was born of the Second Vatican Council, we um, studied the documents of the Second Vatican Council as a starting point. And gradually what developed was the metaphor from the Hebrew scriptures of a tent, the Bedouin tent. And so from that, um, we began to gain momentum and put together this place. We retained some of the elements of tent to be faithful to the metaphor. So for example, the ceiling inside is made from cloth. On the external wall that faces the quadrangle, uh, we realize the placement of the chapel of the Holy Spirit was just as important as what was inside. And so that wall with the Corporate Works of Mercy talks to the public square and in particular talks to the library. So we said that's so appropriate that the Word of God should speak and engage and have dialogue with the words of humans. And so the chapel was not built as a fortress, a place to hide, but in fact it was a place of welcome. So there's a great deal of glass at the entrance. The doors are gigantic and they say, come in, welcome. We came to engage providentially with a Slovenian Jesuit named Father Marko Rupnik and his community in Rome, Centro Eletti. And they were dedicated to fostering dialogue between Roman Catholics and Eastern Christians through art. Before we knew it, there was a drawing on the back of a napkin after a dinner. And he said, I would like to do a mosaic for your community. In two weeks, they put up 250,000 stones. So on the top left point of the mosaic is a red dot. And in antiquity, artists would paint the sun as a red circle, as a red orb. And so that is the point of light, the point of creation. And so from the beginning of the point of light to the revelation in Moses, where God said, go and set my people free that they may come and worship me in the deserts. That revelation continues and in a sense goes back again to the further to the left where the angel Gabriel holds the book of life, the words of wisdom. When the angel Gabriel said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She said, yes. So when she said, yes, let it be done. Her openness allowed the rest of creation to be open again to new life. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, he also brought all of humanity with him. On his right hand is Adam and on his left is Eve. If you look at Jesus' mouth, he is aspirating, he's, he's blowing the Holy Spirit um, onto all gathered not only the disciples, but by extension, onto the community gathered here. And so when one walks into the chapel of the nativity, yes, it is quiet and private and safe and warm, but it's also a quiet celebration of the birth of a child who would become the savior of the universe. On the right-hand side are Hannah and Joachim, the parents of Mary, and they're looking across the room at their grandson, Jesus. Uh, to the far left are the Magi, and they're carrying frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And they're walking towards the child Jesus from the literal east of the campus. The stone upon which they walk is actually from Connecticut. So more than a decade after its completion, the Chapel of the Holy Spirit remains the spiritual center, the core, the heart of Sacred Hearts campus. The continued expansion and growth of the main campus continues to grow around this place of hospitality and welcome and inspiration. 
and dozens of baptisms and weddings and funerals and recommittal services and celebrations and lectures, all that makes this community a community of life and love and hospitality 